All right, welcome back to Photoshop. So I had a former student contact me and she's having some issues cutting hair up. Now she actually did the process right, but it's not turning out correctly because of fringing. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do with fringing when cutting out hair in Adobe Photoshop. So there's a couple things that you need to understand when cutting out hair in Photoshop. And the first one is, and you just can't cut hair out well in any photo. It really helps if you are photographing the subject, understanding that you're going to be cutting the background out because there's some things that you can do to improve the process. So we're gonna take a look and I'm gonna zoom in here at this hair here because this is the first thing that you want, don't wanna do. Actually, let's zoom back out. Now, when you're taking a portrait, this is typical. You shoot with a shallow depth of field. So if you notice, the eyes are totally sharp, but by the time you get back to the hair back here, it's out of focus. This is good technique, but not for cutting out hair. Photoshop is gonna have a difficult time when hair is out of focus and you're gonna have a difficult time selecting it because it's bleeding or blending into the background. It's not sharp and doesn't have a defined line. This is gonna cause issues in Photoshop. The second one is this image. Now, this one is a little more in focus and a little sharper in the background. The issue here is the background color and the hair are almost exactly the same. Now, in this image, it looks great. It works perfect for this image. They are not trying to cut out the hair in this photograph, but if you were to try to select this hair out over here, you would have an extremely difficult time and it would be virtually impossible to get it to look really well. So in this image, we're gonna cut out this really difficult hair. It is just dry and frizzy and can be really difficult to cut out. It is not gonna be perfect, all right? It's gonna look good, but I'm gonna tell you, it's not going to be perfect why there's a couple of different reasons we've got some in focus hair and some out of focus hair and without spending a ridiculous amount of time which we could do and i could do i'm not going to do that in this tutorial i'm just going to show you the idea and then it's up to you to be able to apply it how you want to apply it what are we going to do this is really easy first thing we're going to do is select our subject we've got the new object selection tool we're going to hit select subject and really easily like that Photoshop is going to go ahead and select it for us. We're going to come on over here and we're going to hit select and mask. We've got the new refine hair tool. Usually you would have, to, it used to be you had to come up here and you had to apply it yourself. Nope. We just click refine hair. It usually does a pretty good job. Right here and right here, you can see it's selected areas that we don't want to select, but we can fix that later in the mask. We're going to come down here. We're gonna to go to new layer with mask. That's usually my favorite. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. So you can see we've got, this is our new layer, our mask. It's turned off our background layer. We've got our mask here. I'll show you what the mask looks like. It looks like that. That's our selection. And on a translucent background or a white background, this is gonna look really good. So we're gonna come down here to the plus and click a new layer. And we're gonna turn this layer white. I'll do it the slow way. So you're gonna to go to edit, fill, we're gonna pick the color white and we're gonna fill it. And this hair selection looks good. You, you are pretty much good to go. Well, why? Because you're using a, a white background. So the problem that the student had is they're doing a gradient background or we'll just assume this is a 50% gray. So let's do shift delete, which is the fill command on a Mac. We're gonna change it to 50% gray and you're gonna see the issue. And yeah, now the hair selection looks horrible. So let's look at this. This is the fringing. This is the semi-transparent hair. It's not full hair and it's kind of selected, but not really selected. And so you get this weird ghosting effect on hair around a subject. So it's really actually easy to fix, but it can be a little bit time consuming. Hair is the most time consuming process in the world, especially with somebody with long fine hair or frizzy hair that wants it fixed or cleaned up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our top layer. We're gonna come down, we're gonna create a new layer and I'll call this fringe. 
and it's a blank layer. So there's nothing on this layer right now, nothing's happening. Now we're going to clip this layer to this bottom layer. Now what this means is anything that I do in the fringe layer is only going to apply to the layer below it. And that's what I want it to happen. I don't want it to apply to the gray background. I just want it to apply to the hair. So I'm gonna hold my Alt or Option button, depending if you're on a Mac or a PC. And you get this little box with a down arrow and you click it. And you'll see right here, see that little arrow? That means that this layer is clipped to this layer, which is what we want. So anything we happen here only will apply to this image. Next thing you're gonna want is you're gonna use your clone stamp tool. And right here where it says current and below is important. If you just do current layer, you're gonna be cloning nothing to nothing and nothing will happen. So we want to be able to clone or sample from this layer and this layer. So we want this hair. So the idea here is we're gonna take this hair and we're gonna paste it over this area out here in the mask to make it look like hair instead of this really weird white fringing stuff. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm gonna hold my Alt or Option key, I'm gonna target, and then I'm gonna go out here to that hair and I'm just gonna go over it. And you can see it pasted it in. Now the trick here is you gotta make sure that the hair here is gonna look like the hair here. So right here, you can see where it's sort of out of focus and this hair was out of focus. I'm trying to get more of the out of focus hair out here. I don't really wanna get the in focus hair because it really wasn't in focus back there in the background, that was part of the issue. So if I come out here and then I paste that, we're gonna get more realistic hair. If I take this hair and I paste it over here, it's probably gonna be going the wrong direction and the hair's not gonna look perfect. However, it might. Part of this that you need to be intelligent about is selecting the proper area of hair to clone and then paste out here. So this hair right here is similar to this hair, so I can paste that out there like that. So I can click here, I can go over that, and that's gonna be somewhat realistic. So I don't want hair going this way and then paste it over here because it's gonna look weird because it's not the right. Now sometimes you can't get the perfect hair or the perfect area of hair to clone it. I could keep cloning from this if I wanted to keep getting this sort of out of focus hair in the background to make it look realistic, or I could try to get hair from a similar or apparent area. And this is gonna get rid of all this fringing. So you can see over here, we've, we've done pretty much a lot of this space. But if you really zoom in, you're gonna see that the, the hair has like little breaks or holes in it. That has to do with the selection of the hair. And you can tell it's not a perfect clone of what the hair would actually look like. But if you zoom back out, it does fill and get rid of that selection. You need to spend some time going through the hair. So in sections like this, where it's a little bit lighter to getting some of that hair that looks like it belongs there. And you can see that wasn't too perfect there. And we'll just keep doing this until I think it looks good enough. So make sure that you spend some time and you're cloning hair in a logical spot to get out here. It's gonna get rid of the fringing, but it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be a whole lot better than where you started from. Obviously the goal in photography is to never have to cut out the background. If you can shoot a background, the background that you want, and you don't have to do it, it saves you time and it's gonna solve issues that you see here that occasionally you're given or you have other photos where you don't have that option. This is how you get rid of fringing. The cool thing is it's on its own separate layer so you could turn it on and off. And so if you don't like the way you did it, you create a new layer and then toggle between this one and the other one to see which one that you liked better. Eventually you'll get pretty good at this and it's pretty easy to do. This is some really difficult hair to do, deal with. Usually you're not gonna have hair this difficult. Remember, if you can keep everything in focus, that's gonna make a world of difference when doing this process. Well, that's how you deal with fringing inside of Adobe Photoshop. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. One last thing I gotta remember is don't forget, I have a link down to a new Facebook group. So one of the issues that happens is a lot of times people explain stuff to me. I need to see an image or a video of what you're doing to make an intelligent decision on telling you what to do. Sometimes it's difficult for me in the comment section to try to figure out what you're saying and try to give you an intelligent way to fix the issue.
if you want to go ahead and check out that Facebook group, it gives you the option to post photos and videos so I can actually see the problem versus you explaining the problem to me. And don't forget to subscribe.